Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Creating a te Template webinar. My name is Nick, and I will be doing the presentation with you today. Just like all of our previous webinars, everybody will be on mute, but if you do happen to have any questions at any point during our class, please feel free to go ahead and type that into the questions and answers section. And at the end of each class, I will go through and answer any questions that may have come up. Also at the end of the class, I will be sending out an email that will contain a document that covers everything that we're gonna be talking about in today's class. But should you happen to have any questions while going over that document, please don't hesitate. You can reach out and contact our support department and we will be happy to help you out. Again, today's class is on creating a template. In our last couple of classes, we have looked at uh, some steps to bring us to this point of creating a uh, template. So we're gonna kind of cut, touch on those as well, just to give you a good sense of an idea of what creating a template is going to take. So in today's class, as you may already know, by default, every new project that you start in Envisioneer is based on a template. A template is going to determine what settings your new projects will have, such as the units of measure, your building location settings, and you may even include building elements in a template or a complete set of worksheets with custom title blocks. You can create a template out of any drawing by simply saving it in your templates directory. To use the template in a new drawing, you need to select the template in your startup options. In today's class, we're gonna go over what settings you should be saving in your template, and then we're gonna create a custom template. So first, let's look at creating a template. So by default, when you start a drawing in Envisioneer, you're going to get this screen here where you can again, choose a template uh, from starting a new drawing, and you get a list of different templates that are available to you. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, just gonna select one of our basic templates from within the uh, defaults that we send out. And I'm gonna use this option here, and I'm gonna say create. What this will do is it's now going to create a brand new drawing based off of the settings of that particular template but we're gonna adjust some of those settings so that we're gonna customize this to match the information that I want for my uh, company. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go up and you can go to uh, settings and you can select building locations, or if you like, you can go down into the lower left-hand corner and you can simply select this little button here and that is the building locations button. And this will bring up the building locations dialog box. Now, the building locations is a setting that is going to be custom to the area in which you are going to be designing or building your uh, designs. Now, as you can see here, this particular template has a full foundation, a ground floor, and a second floor. And we can see the levels in which these locations sit uh, relative to the terrain. So if I open up the edit location dialog and I take a look at that, it's gonna give me a good graphical representation of what these measurements are referring to. <clears throat> so the first measurement that we see is the one foot five and a half inches. And we can also see that that is highlighted here. This is the distance from the top of our terrain, which we're going to assume is zero, to the top of our finished frame floor. So this is going to be one foot, five and a half inches. Now this one foot, five and a half inches takes into consideration the thickness of my floor that I'm gonna be building with, as well as if it's gonna have a sill plate, as well as the thickness of the sheathing that's gonna be on top of that floor. And it's also going to include any of the exposed foundation that we can see. So as you can see here, I can see that my foundation is going to sit at a negative seven foot six inches, but the wall height is eight feet. So that tells me that six inches of that foundation wall is going to be exposed above my terrain line. So this one foot five and a half inches is taking into consideration the six inches of exposed foundation, 
the floor thickness, as well as any uh, sheathing that I have on top of that. And that's where that one foot five and a half inches is coming from. Everything else in this dialogue is now gonna be measured off of the top of our frame floor. So our head heights are gonna be six foot eight, our ceiling heights are gonna be eight feet to the underside of the ceiling, and our wall heights are going to be eight foot one and an eighth. You can again adjust these values and these values when adjusted will also calculate the um, top of wall from grade option for you as well. So you can see that this value will adjust accordingly if you change the wall height. So if I make this a nine foot one and one eighth wall, it's going to automatically adjust that to be 10 foot six and five eighths. So it is like a running calculator. It will adjust those values for you as you type them in. And you can do this for all of the different locations that you have. You wanna match up with your building locations, what you typically draw with in a day-to-day -day practice in your office. So if you guys typically use a uh, slab on grade, or if you use a full foundation with a ground floor and second floor, then you're gonna edit the appropriate template and match as close as you can to what your default options would represent. You're also going to want to make sure that you adjust your framing options. So if you are using building essentials or construction suite and you want to take advantage of specifying what framing uh, elements need to be used, then you're going to select the framing options. And again, you're going to set this up in your template so that every time you start a new drawing, it's always going to use the framing options that you would use typically in your area. I'm again just going to click cancel on that and I'm just going to say OK to that dialog. So that saves all of our building location adjustments. Next, we're going to go up and we're going to select settings. And we're going to select under the program settings. We are going to select drawing aids. Now, under drawing aids, you're able to choose the best methods for you while you draw. And as you can see, we have a couple of different options available to you um, in this uh, property section. So, or sorry, in this program settings section. So what we can do here is we can adjust how we want multi-click elements to be inserted. Is it going to be just a pick points or is it going to be a pick and drag option? Do you want single click elements? So once you've done a single click insertion, it's done, or do you wanna repeat the insertion until you cancel it? We also give you an auto scroll option, which will allow you to automatically scroll the page left, right, up, or down when you bring your cursor to the edge of the screen while you're in a command, and it will automatically scroll for you. So by default, these things are turned on, but again, you can customize these to again, match what's gonna work best for you in your office setting. The one area I do like to point out is nudge distance. And some people know about this, some people do not. It is a very handy feature. And essentially what it allows you to do is it allows you to select an element and then using the arrow keys on your keyboard, you are able to press left, right, up or down and it will move that selected element whatever distance you have entered in under the normal option. So I like to use the toilet as a perfect example because that is something that you will move around quite a bit. You can select the toilet and then use your arrow keys, again, left, right, up, or down. And every time you press one of those keys, it's going to move in that direction one inch. You can also have your control key pressed and use the same arrow keys and it will move that object one foot from wherever it was originally placed. So you can customize these values. Uh, one inch and one foot are the defaults that we ship with. You can, again, reduce or increase the sizing to, again, match which is going to work best for you. I'm going to, again, just going to leave mine at the one inch option. Another page to take a look at is under building aids. So again, depending on the region that you're in, you may want to have different uh, graphical representations for certain elements in your design, like your doors and your windows. 
So here in North America, uh, when we look at how a window opening symbol is displayed, it is pointing the triangle point at the hinge side. In some other areas, that is the opposite. So you can again customize how you want these uh, opening symbols to be displayed in your projects. So by default, ours is set to type two. When it comes to door directions, we have the uh, right hand and the left hand. And in some areas, it refers to the side that the uh, handle is on. So we can see a right hand here is showing that the uh, handle is going to be on the right hand side or on the left hand side, where in other cases, it refers to the hinge side. So when they say right hand, they want the hinge to be on the right hand side or the left hand side. So you can again choose whichever is going to work more accurately to what you uh, use in your office settings. Just a couple of other options in here that are important to point out. Uh, opening placements. So when you add in an opening, do you want that to be dimensioning to the edge or to the center? You can again customize that to be whichever option that you want there. And then another one we like to use is dynamic dimensions. Anytime you add in an element, it's always going to show a dynamic dimension. And here, do you want that to be from the base of the wall or to the core of the wall itself? So again, you can customize this. By default, we leave ours to the outer uh, face of the surface and we have it set to dimension to edge. I'm just gonna say apply and okay to that. And I'm gonna go to settings and I'm gonna go to document settings. Now under the document settings, these are going to be settings that reflect in the actual document that you're working on. So these can change per document. Again, we can see that we have a bunch of different options on the left-hand side, and you can go through this and again, fine tune exactly how you want certain settings to be displayed in your document. Under drawing aids, you can see that we can adjust the snap angle option. So if you want to be drawing at certain angles, you can customize this value and make sure that your object snap is set so that it moves to those actual angles. You can also adjust the uh, ability to allow for collision to be turned on. I do always recommend keeping collision turned on. It is a handy tool for when you're placing objects in as it will not allow you to place objects inside of other objects. So again, I typically refer to that, or sorry, I typically uh, let people know to keep that turned on. But one of the elements that I wanna point out in here is the automatic elements. And in the automatic elements, we have an automatically insert floors option. If you are a designer and you like to show uh, a quick representation of a room. So you're going to draw out four walls or whatever, a closed circuit of walls. When you have automatically insert floors turned on, it's going to automatically insert a floor surface uh, for you in that design. And that's a great way to just very quickly add in your walls and it throws in a floor. And then in a 3D view, you're going to see the walls and the floor uh, instantaneously. The downfall to the automatically insert floors option is it inserts at zero. So if you later on go in and you add in a structural floor, so you wanna actually show your floor framing, you're gonna to need to elevate this automatically inserted floor up, whatever the thickness of that floor surface is. So I usually say about a quarter inch. Another downfall to the automatically inserted floors is they're not very intelligent. They don't have a lot of control to them. You can't cut openings through them. Um, so it is more of a graphical um, insertion. So it was a very quick insertion of a floor to help you close in a space, but it's not gonna give you a lot of flexibility when editing it. So you can again choose if you wanna keep the automatically inserted floors option turned on, or do you wanna turn it off and you would manually insert your own floor surfaces into the rooms that need those surfaces. But again, that's going to be a decision you have to make um, as a company. Underneath the units of measure, you can control what units you want to be drawing in and then what precision you want those units to be in. And you can, again, fine tune those for 
uh, again, your office standards. There are a bunch of different options in here that you can go through. I'm not gonna touch on them all, but I do wanna to touch on the Dimension Auto Exterior. The Dimension Auto Exterior option allows you to define exactly how you want your dimensions to be displayed when you get to that point. So anytime you add in your dimension strings, this is what it refers to. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this is set up in your templates so that every time you just select the insert auto exterior dimensions, it's gonna always insert it off of the settings that you've defined in here. So by default, you can see we have include dimension strings four, and you have your overalls, your projections, your openings, and then unchecked by default is interiors and angled walls. You can turn these on. So if you wanna show where interior walls are on your exterior string, then you would enable this option. And once you enable this option, the interior walls section will highlight. And then you can say, all right, on my exterior dimension strings, I wanna show where the interior walls are based on either the leading and trailing edge of the surface, the leading and trailing edge of the core, or do I just wanna to measure to the center of that wall? I typically don't show interior walls on my dimension strings. I will use interior dimensions to show where those walls are. So by default, mine is going to be turned off. Uh, same is gonna be true for angled walls. By default, it is turned off. But if you know the design you're going to be working with is going to have angled walls, then you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have that turned on. What this option does is anytime you automatically add in your dimensions, it will match the angle that the wall is. If this is unchecked, then it's just gonna throw in a straight line dimension and it won't be accurate to what the angle dimension is. So again, if 90% of your drawings do not have angled walls in them, then I would keep that unchecked and you can turn it on um, when needed in your new drawings. Uh, but if you do draw with a lot of angled walls, then you may want to have that turned on in your uh, default templates. Underneath the include dimension strings for, we can now define how we want our dimension strings to look. So by default, we have a four foot offset from the edge of our uh, wall to our first dimension string. And then any subsequent dimension string after that is going to be two feet uh, away from our initial offset. How do you want your extension lines to be displayed? Are you going right to the corner or are you terminating in a straight line? Openings, what are we dimensioning to? Are you going to the center of the opening or are you going to actually dimension to the edges of the opening? If you are going to be dimensioning to the edge of the opening, you do have the ability to show the height of the window uh, in your dimension string. And then you can choose your separation marker either by a forward slash, a dash, a by sign, or multi-line. Uh, again, not typically something people use, but it is there if you do want to take advantage of it. And then we have our end conditions. So when we add in our dimension strings, what are we dimensioning to? Are we dimensioning to the edge of the surface, to the edge of the core, to the edge of the, or sorry, to the center of the core? to the interior core or to the interior surface. And again, you can adjust um, this to be whatever you want uh, within your drawing file. But by default, what do you want this to use? And we're gonna keep ours set to exterior veneer. Under the dimension auto interior, you can again specify how you want your auto interior dimensions to be displayed. You can set this up so that it is going to the leading and trailing edges of your surface, and or you can go to the leading and trailing edges of your core or to the center of the wall itself. Over here, there is an ignore wall dimensions. And what this will do is if I'm drawing a line through to dimension my interiors, every wall that I cross, it's going to dimension the wall thickness. So if I'm crossing through three different walls and they're all two by four walls, it's gonna throw in a four and a half inch dimension every time I cross an interior wall or an exterior wall. You may not want that to happen because it's just gonna be added dimensions that you have to delete. So you can simply put in a check mark in here and say, I want to ignore the wall dimensions when I use this interior wall dimension tool. I'm gonna to keep mine selected and I'm gonna say apply. 
and then I'm going to say OK. And that saves all of our settings for us in our uh, template. Now, in our working drawing sheets, we can go through and we can specify how we want our drawing sheets to look. And in one of our previous classes, we went through and we customized our title blocks to show different information for our company. So I'm going to quickly go through that. I'm going to select this title block and I'm going to go in and say edit definition. I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to delete out all of this and say delete. I want to take note of the size. So I'm going to type in DI and I'm going to measure from here to here is about 15 foot, four and a half inches. And the height is eight foot, two and three eighths. So the image that I'm going to insert in here, I want it to be about 15 feet by eight feet. So all I'm going to do now is just say import an image file. And I'm going to go to my pictures. And under my pictures, I'm going to select my company logo. So I'm going to say web, webinar company logo. I'm going to say open. And I'm going to make sure that it's not dimmed. And I'm going to say I want this to be at a width of 15 feet. And we're going to say at a height of eight feet. So we'll let the width or the height justify the width here because I want to make sure it fits without distorting it. So now we're going to say insert. And now attached to my cursor is going to be that new company logo. And I'm just going to place it right in to that area. I can also go through and I can customize the dates. So if I want the dates to be correct, I can say that this should be, uh, we're going to go with uh, we'll go five, so let's just do month. We're not going to worry about days. So we're just going to go uh, month and year. And then we're going to say, okay. And it will update that for us. I don't want to adjust anything else in here. I'm just going to leave everything else as it is. And then I'm just going to hit escape on my keyboard. And it's now going to adjust that title block for us. And then I'm just going to hit zoom extents. I want to make sure that it fits into that screen. And all I can do now is simply go through and make sure all of my other sheets have that logo in it. And I can see that they all do. So every title block is now uh, adjusted in this template to match what I want with my company information. So now that I've updated my settings and I've updated my title blocks, I'm gonna go back into my model view. And actually one quick note in here, I always make sure that everything is set up and zoomed fully to the extents. So I'll make sure that each sheet is zoom to fit. I want to make sure that when I start a new drawing, everything is in the view that I want. If I want additional sheets, I can add in additional sheets and then again, customize the title blocks accordingly for those new sheets. I'm going to go back to model. And just a quick note in here, any elements that are in your drawing will also be saved in your template as well. So unless you want these elements to appear in your new projects, you should delete those elements from your drawing. We started from a brand new blank template, so there is no elements in the drawing area, so we should be okay. But if you're using an old file and you wanna take advantage of it, just make sure if you don't want those elements in there, you delete them out uh, so they don't show up in your future template. Now that we got everything set up the way that we want, we're gonna simply go File, and we're going to say save as. Now, when you select save as, you're going to give this uh, a name. So we're going to go to our location where we want to save this file. <clears throat> and in this case, we're going to save this file to our C drive. And under our C drive, we're going to go to our program data, CAD soft, Envisioneer 16. And then under templates, we're going to save this. And I'm just going to select this webinar template. And that's going to be the file I want to use. Now, we can go even further. So not only do I want to save this with a unique name in this specific folder, 
I want to also adjust the options. So I can say I can use the last open view or I can use a specific file. Well, I want to use an image file and I'm just going to use that company logo that I have from my, for my company. So that's going to be the image I see uh, when I go to select a new template. I can also type in what this template is. And if I want to add in a new line, I just simply select the uh, control and enter option and it will enter in a new line. And then I can just type in additional information. <coughs> Pardon me. And in this case, this is going to be webinar for me. So I know exactly what that says. And then I can just simply say, okay. And that creates the new template. And all I have to do now is simply select save. And I'm saving over top of my old one. So I'm just going to say yes. And what that will do is it will now save that. And I can see up here in the top, it now says webinar.bld. I can go file, save, file, close. And when I go to start a new drawing now, I go file, new. I'm going to see that new template in my list of templates. So anytime I start a new drawing now for my company, I'm going to use this template. And when I say create, it's going to start that new drawing. It's going to use all of the settings that we defined. And I'm going to be able to start drawing with that particular file. So all of my title blocks are going to have the company logo in it. When I add in walls into my design, and I go into a 3D view, I'm not going to have the floor added in. It's going to be, I thought I unchecked that. Maybe I didn't. Oh, I did not uncheck it. So it's still checked there. I should have unchecked that, my mistake. It will leave the, um, floor out. So if we go file close and we'll go file, open up that webinar template. So now I'm just opening up the template again. So as an example, this is a good example for you. If you make a mistake and you want to fix something in your template, just open the template drawing back up, go to your settings, document settings and uncheck the elements, say apply and then okay. And then you can save that template again, close, file new, select your template. And now when you add in walls, and you go into that 3D view, it should not insert that floor material in so you will have to add in your own materials into that design. And then the other change that we made was the auto interior dimensions tool. So if I go to uh, tools, dimensions, auto interior, I turned off the include wall thicknesses. So it's not going to show me the wall thickness when I add that in. If I do want to add it in for one particular project, then I can just simply go in to uh, document settings and I can uncheck it, say apply and then okay. And then tools, dimensions, auto interior. And when you cut through it, it will show you not only the thickness of the, or the width of the room, but it'll also show you the wall thicknesses. And again, we've already customized each of the drawing sheets so that they have our company logo in it. So that covers everything that I wanted to show you in regards to creating a template to use the settings that you're gonna use most often within your office environment. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the questions section. So again, if you do happen to have any questions, please feel free to go ahead and type those in. <clears throat> While I'm waiting for questions to come in, I'm just going to reiterate that I will be sending out an email that contains a document 
that covers everything that we've talked about in today's class. And again, if you happen to have any questions while going over that document, please don't hesitate. You can reach out to our support department and we'll be happy to help you out with any questions you may have. All right, perfect. Well, there doesn't appear to be any questions. So I do want to thank everybody for attending today. I do look forward to speaking with you all again very soon. Thank you very much, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your day.